On this episode of Ham Radio, dude, we're gonna talk about the new Super Spike. Never said Super Spike. Never said Super Spike. Super Dude 2.0. We're gonna talk about some of the modifications I made, and we're gonna go test this in the field to see how well this holds up. From the guy who's told he has the best sweater game in all of amateur radio, let's get started. After the first episode I made about the Dude Spike. I got a couple of comments that were actually really good and I took that advice and I made the Dude's Bike 2.0 as we're gonna call it. But basically, originally I had this PETG printed part at 99% infill. Now this isn't the original part, this is actually the modification. And some of the modifications that I made were, this cone shape is a lot thicker now as you guys can see, and that gives a little more stability when the tent spike goes in. Okay, so on top of that, we also added a 45 roughly degree angle that comes down off of that cylinder shape onto the flat portion of the dude spike. Now, what does this do? It just adds more support. This thing at 99% infill, it's solid. I mean, I put this out in the winds, it was about 18 mile an hour winds and it did just fine. Uh, it might have been 22 mile an hour winds on that test, I don't quite recall. But fortunately, in a couple minutes here, we're gonna be able to test it in about 25 mile an hour winds. Well, just so you know, that was a little foreshadowing apparently because we didn't get to test it in the winds, but if you continue to watch, you'll find out why and how I broke the dude spike. <laughs> Last, I went ahead and I added a little bit of a groove here. So when you put in your SO239 to 3 eighths adapter, uh, actually, let me show you. Give me just a moment. I found it, there it is. Okay, so when we put this SO239 connector on with the 3 8 inch adapter, and if you have a wrench, you could tighten it a little bit more, but it actually makes it more flush, and I assure you that it will go up and sit flush against the flat portion of the actual mount, which was wonderful, except I kind of messed up a little bit. Let me explain this. If you couldn't tell by that whole interlude, yes, I did go to Hamcation, and yes, I did go to Hamcation to look for a connector, which I found these elbow connectors. And that is the problem. Well, first, I could have just read the comments in my video to say I needed an elbow connector, but also, I never expected an elbow connector to have a base this wide. And so when I put it in, it doesn't quite fit flush. Like, it looks like we're gonna have to come out with the Dude Spike 3.0. So what I ended up doing is I ended up shaving off a portion of that 45 degree angle that is attached to the mount so that the elbow connector will fit in a little bit more. And this is what I came up with. First of all, we have our tent spike, which I've super glued in. Again, if you wanted to, you can go ahead and you could add a ground onto here, which you would ground to the bottom portion here. But I didn't do that. I have my radio wire holder here. And that is gonna be one of the problems with this design is this, this little ring adapter here it's a 6-16, it's huge. It's like 5 eighths of an inch, if not more. And those are really hard to come upon. But anyway, I took that and I put it on the bottom ground portion. There's no way it's gonna snag and ground out the antenna portion. It's, it's in there pretty good and secure. And then that goes into my power pole adapter, just as I mentioned in the first video. But also, when I printed up in the PA-12, things got a little bit bigger. And I say that because uh, maybe the accuracy of their printers versus a 3D printer was a little bit more reliable. And I ended up having to super glue the spike in. So the changes that I made are now permitted on here. And I actually kind of like that quite a bit. Uh, regardless here, I can't seem to break this. And I know there's a sharp end and I'm pointing it to myself, but my bad. Uh, I think that only thing that we could do at this moment is go test out in the winds to see how this is gonna hold up. All right, well, we got 23 mile an hour winds and I thought this would be great, but we ran into a problem. Let me show you. Here we go, we have the dude spike, right? We have the camera, we have the radio, we have the coax and we have the radio wires. But dude, where is my MFJ1979? I must have taken it out of the vehicle, so we'll see you again in the morning. 
All right, so I'm back home, and here's the deal. I wanted to go to the park to test this for two reasons. Number one, wide open spaces means maybe more wind, although the wind seems to be picking up even more. I think I'm going to be fine. Uh, number two, though, the ground at the park I was going to be at seems to be less frozen than the ground here. Now, my thought process on it is, is if I put this into a frozen ground, it's going to stay put. It's not going to move anywhere. It's not going to fall out. The weight's not going to pull it and bend it over. And that's kind of a disadvantage of testing in the Illinois winters. So like I said earlier, I did send this to a few people or gave them to a few people. One of them was W4ORH, Ron Aeronautical Mobile. And he lives out in Florida. Ron did me a huge favor and he's been building one of these. I'll post a photo here. And he's also been testing it. And he said, hey, in the Florida, in the Florida sand that we have, the Florida soil, it's, uh, it's kind of coming out. I'm gonna have to reevaluate that one once it gets to be a little bit uh, less cold here and I can go to the beach and test it in a sandier environment to see what happens and what we might be able to do, whether it's a longer spike or something. And like Ron mentioned to me, even if we get a longer spike, that makes it less portable so it's not really efficient at that point. Anyway, let's go ahead. I'm gonna hammer this in the ground. I'm gonna use an actual hammer. I'm gonna hit it pretty hard to see if I can't get this to break because uh, durability tests are my favorite thing in the world. Hey, if you're watching this Ham Radio Dude episode and you know that this is your hammer from about 10 or 15 years ago, let me know because I don't know where this came from, uh, honestly. But let's go ahead and uh, spike this in the ground. And you know, I'm just gonna kind of hit this hard here and we're, we're okay testing to see if this breaks. And it broke, you see that? So already that's a test here that we know, okay, well maybe we need to be a little bit more gentle when we're pounding this in, because that was a weak point. As you can see right here, it actually just broke kind of where I had this all tightened. Um, back to the drawing board, Bob, for ham radio dude spike, whatever we're calling it, 3.0. We could call it coincidence, but if we take a look here where it broke, it's right where I kind of used a grinder to take away a little bit of that angle uh, so I could fit the elbow connector. Um, and that might have loosened this up enough where, you know, we're hitting the hammer and there's nothing under there because I grinded it away, it kind of broke off. I'm going to have to consider, actually, you guys let me know what you think we could do to fix that. But for now, I'm just going to make another one here. I'll show you the process of putting it all together. And uh, when you guys, or if you guys think of anything, maybe we have more of an angle here so we can still fit the elbow connector in on the base here. Uh, but uh, that appears on my first glance what happened is it was taking the the blow of the hammer which i was hitting it pretty hard but it just there was nothing under there to support it and it cracked it off and then there's a better angle of the top portion where it broke and just for reference uh, you probably saw in the video i was pretty sure i was hitting the head of the tent stake here but it still broke here, so maybe it was the vibrations which caused the crack as well. Let me know what you think, but let's build another one here real quick. All right, so I got the new piece here, but I do want to mention something. I mentioned it in prior episodes as well. Uh, if you do something and you fail, it's not really a failure if you keep going and you find a way eventually to succeed. It's kind of just a hurdle in the road which makes you stronger, but makes you more knowledgeable as well. And I think in amateur radio, that's kind of like our pursuit of of uh, knowledge, right? Where this is a testing hobby. This we have the ability to test. We're allowed to test. Make the best of it. And if 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 you mess up, hey, at least you didn't mess up when you were on a mountaintop. Now I was thinking about it too. And that that ground I had mentioned it a few minutes ago is really, uh, really hard. It's still frozen. So that might have been part of it too. That's a lot of impact. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe that's what happened. Let's get rid of some of this old stuff here. As you can see, I have some uh, Loctite brand super glue and I have a new tent spike. We're just gonna go ahead and place the uh, tent spike in here. I'm gonna glue the, the top portion of the tent spike here, and then I'm gonna slide this up. So right, if I glue my fingers together, you guys will get an extra little feature or an extra little bonus show. <laughs> Hope I don't glue my fingers together. And if I do, we're gonna hear about it on QRZ.com. Anyway, I'm just gonna generously apply this all over and now you're gonna see, as soon as I do that, of course, I have a bunch of extra super glue on the top here. Uh, the other thing I might be able to do is I might be able to hit it from the bottom. So for example, maybe I should get a little bit down here as well. Uh, I'm really putting it on there and I'm just gonna let it sit here. I don't know how long we're gonna to have to let this one sit for. The last one was about 24 hours and uh, we'll be right back. 
Well, it's the morning after. Let's try that again. Um, so last night I did do a couple of things. Well, first of all, the super glue is still drying and you could tell I used an excessive amount by all that white that's drying out on the super glue. I'm okay with that. Again, this is all testing, but in the future I'd be a little cleaner. However, actually in my advantage, that might take the impact of the hammer a little bit less strain on the on the actual dude spike mount itself. I'm not sure. But also I went ahead and I shaved away portions of the bottom with a grinder. And the reason I did that is to fit that elbow connector as we talked about earlier. However, again, if I were to put the elbow connector in the same way, you could see it's not gonna fit, there's that gap. And the reason I that is happening is, is I didn't go as deep on the 45 degree angle support for the dude spike but now I can go ahead and I can put this on the side and I think that's gonna be good for at least testing purposes. Again, in the future, I'll go ahead and I'm gonna redesign this and get some new ones printed. But I also was considering, well, maybe I extend just this circular piece out a little bit more for the dude spike. And that gives me that opportunity to still keep that 45 degree angle while still fitting the whole elbow connector in. There's a couple more things we're gonna talk about here in just a moment. But before I do that, let me kind of show you what I was talking about earlier with that ring connector. It's a big ring connector and on that elbow connector, it fits just fine, you know? So once it gets tied down, it's not gonna move from this spot right here, roughly. And some people are saying, well, why, why do you need an elbow connector? And the best thing to do is to show you, I'm a visual guy and they look about the same right here as far as the profile goes, and they go down roughly about the same height if I can get them there. But the problem is, is once you have the coax in the straight through, meaning three yeas to SL239, the coax is gonna come down and then you're probably gonna need an L connector anyway, or you're gonna bend your coax to a point where the coax will probably go bad after a while from having such a uh, harsh angle, if you will. Now, we eliminate all those issues with the elbow connector. Elbow connector comes out at the same profile, the same depth, and boom, straight out with the coax to the side. No bending. So last night when I was sitting there waiting for paint to dry, or in this case, super glue to dry, I came up with maybe another thought process on this whole dude spike, which I'm gonna have to work on. But this is the cool thing about engineering is when you think of one idea, it leads to another idea, and then there's a snowball effect and your mind is going crazy. And it's just that right now, it's just an idea. However, there's two ways I could do this. I carry a camera bag a lot of times for my radios. And if I find a way to hoist this up so it stays straight up, antenna up in the air, radial out, coax to radio, pedestrian mobile. And the other thing I was thinking was putting it on the side of the bag and having 550 cord or a bungee cord wrapped around the bag. And that might be an easy solution too, but I want it to stay stable. I'm getting too far ahead of myself. Let's work back on the dude spike as it is. And now the question that you should never, ever, ever ask a woman, how much do you weigh? The dude spike as it sits right now with the spike, the mount, the adapter and the radio wire is eight ounces. But also, the question that every man lies about, how big is it? The dude spike is nine and a half inches in length. I'm talking about fishing. Hey, let's recap a couple of things here because I really am excited about the dude spike. I'm having a really good time building this. We've had a part one. I didn't think we were gonna have a part two and now we're gonna have a part three. So if you don't like it, don't cry about it in the comments below, Chip. And let me ask you, is this something that would be good for portable at eight ounces and nine and a half inches in length? Or is that maybe a little bit too big and too heavy? Uh, let me know what you think below. I'm also very curious to know if there's any modifications you think could be made without changing the design too dramatically. Yeah, you might actually be sitting there saying, Ham Radio Dude, that was a great episode. I love the transitions you're doing and, and the whole storyline, and I appreciate that, thanks. And then there's a couple people right now saying that this is stupid, what's the point? And I'm gonna reiterate that it's all about the experience. I started this video off with the intentions of showing you how well the dude spike was working, and then I think we realized about seven hammers in that it didn't work too well. That's the fun thing again about amateur radio is the constant experimentation. But along the way, I show you the things that I'm doing, maybe to help you learn, maybe to trigger something in your mind that says, hey, I think I could do something and go have fun and experiment in amateur radio. And actually another thing that we think about is the whole process of actually designing and marketing something. 
You don't just design a product once and throw it out to the market and call it good. You design it, you test it, you redesign it, you test it again, you send it to multiple people, you get their honest feedback, you redesign it based upon their feedback, you test it again, and eventually maybe one day it'll hit the market. <laughs> If you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. We'll see you in part three. I'm Ham Radio Dude 73.